This story makes me giggle. So this is reported by Axios. The Hill, a Beltway-based print publication that receives significant national traffic to its digital website, is being more aggressively shopped by its owner, Jimmy Finkelstein, sources tell Axios. With broadcasting giant Nexstar Media Group, a source tells Axios. Finkelstein has held talks for years about offloading the publication, but sources who have been recently pitched on the sale say those talks have gotten more serious amid a ripe deals market. Yeah, I'm sure that's why. And as Finkelstein looks to capitalize on the outlet's success during the Trump era boom. Sources say The Hill brings in over $20 million in annual revenue. Most of that revenue comes from digital advertising and branded content. It makes a few million annually from events. Another source disputes that number and says that revenue last year was about double that. Two sources say revenues and profits right now are historically high for the outlet. One source notes that there's been an aggressive focus on revenue for the past year as sale talks have become more serious. I love this. Now, my guess is the real reason why they're trying to sell it and trying to sell it ASAP is because now they're being thoroughly embarrassed. Why are they being embarrassed, you ask? Crystal and Sagar left, and this shit imploded, like, right now skis. The second Crystal and Sagar left, it was like... It was just... It was over. It was, it was done-so. There was no if, ends, or buts about it. Like, I know I'm being a dick, but that's okay, I'm kind of a dick. But, go ahead, go to the hill and look at their fucking YouTube channel now, and look at the kind of numbers that they're getting on it. Just go look at it. Just go look at it. Go look at it. Go look at what the numbers were like when Crystal and Sagar were doing Rising. They made The Hill's YouTube channel. Yes, they would post other news clips on The Hill where it's like little clips of fucking Marco Rubio or some asshole saying something and the 47 second clip of, this is newsworthy. Most of them would get next to no views. Every now and then you'd have one that goes viral and takes off and gets, you know, millions of views. But the bulk of the heavy lifting over at The Hill's YouTube channel was done by Crystal and Sagar on Rising. And they developed a pretty giant and dedicated audience. So you go back and you look at the numbers on the Hills YouTube channel when Crystal and Sagar were doing their show. Guess what? The They did a ton of content and like probably the lowest that they would get on any video would be like 50,000 views. And they would regularly do a, an interesting radar and get over 500,000 views. So that was their range between like 50,000 and 500,000. Every now and then they get one with over a million. You go look at those numbers now, dog. Uh. Son, they're like, they're huffing and they're puffing and they're clawing and they're trying so hard to like, can we get over a thousand views on this video? The saddest part is that a lot of what they're doing is looking at the topics that did well for Crystal and Sagar and they're having new people who aren't passionate about this and don't really have developed ideologies, they're plugging in these new media creatures, elite media creatures, into the seats, and they're trying to talk about, let's talk about Jeffrey Epstein, or let's talk about UFOs, or let's talk about Fauci and Lab Leak and Bill Gates. Let's talk about... Let's talk about what crazy thing Pelosi is doing, or let's talk about how corrupt the Democrats and Republicans are, and they just, they're just, they can't get anything right. Now they're lucky, if, an, if any video gets over 10,000 views, they're like throwing a party back there. So they went from 50,000 minimum to like over a million, that was the window, to now it's like 367 views to like 12,000. And so it is. Just, it was just instant implosion. Instant. And now understand, I'm sure. So they get most of their revenue from um, the print stuff. And their print stuff's not terrible. I use their print stuff all the time. I'm sure they get most of their revenue from that, for sure. And I'm sure they get most of their revenue from these events that they do, right? But, but, you cannot deny the thorough embarrassment that is, having a YouTube channel, having a hit show, having a different, unique, interesting show, and then you go from that to like, this new show is unwatchable, and, and, they've lost over 100, 
1,000 subscribers since Crystal and Sagar have left, and that number's still going down, son. Uh, they had like 1.3 something um, million subs, and then now it's like a race to can they get under 1 million? Is it possible to get to like 1.3 million and then have a historic collapse to under 1 million? I. That would be, I think that would be a YouTube record if that happens. When you're like over 300,000 over a million, and then you might end up under a million? See, imagine if they had gotten like the YouTube plaque for the million thing. I don't know if they did. I don't think they did. But imagine they got that, and then like it collapses all the way back to like 940,000. What would happen? Would YouTube be like, listen, numbers are what they are. We're going to go ahead and need you to return that. You know what I'm saying? Like, what would happen? Jesus Christ. It Listen, it's not a coincidence that at the same time they're trying to sell this, it's the same time that The Hill is being thoroughly embarrassed online. Because even though they make more money through the print stuff, um, even though the traffic in the print stuff is good, there are definitely people who are plugged in enough there to look at it and know, like, oh, we're just getting embarrassed now. And so it's almost like before everybody realizes how embarrassing this is, let's try to offload this thing. Because it's not going to be worth nearly as much now because one of the most interesting parts is now gone. So that is what I think is happening. And by the way, this shows you how out of touch mainstream media is too. Because I'm sure there were a number of articles written on this. I only saw the Axios one. But nobody even mentioned what's happening online. Like this is a huge story online about how abysmal... The Hill is doing and how it's unwatchable now and Crystal and Saga it really puts in perspective how good Crystal and Saga are at their show. And everybody online is talking about it. There's been a thousand. Every, you know, independent new media outlet has covered it and weighed in on it. But mainstream media is like just stenographer to whoever the brass are at The Hill. Yes, oh yes. Let's talk about The Hill, a ba Beltway-based print publication and they receive significant national traffic and they're shopping it around. They're only shopping it around because they're doing so well and they're so successful. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> There's nothing strange or weird or terrible going on over there now. <laughs> this is how terrible mainstream media is. There was no, like, basic cursory look at what's actually going on over there. Nobody looked at the YouTube channel. Nobody saw the implosion. Nobody see reads the comments on the videos, which basically every single one is like, Boo! Boo! Go watch Breaking Points. That's Crystal and Sager's new show. Boo! So anyway, I was laughing my ass off when I saw that uh, the news broke last night that The Hill is looking for buyers for their outlet. And it just happens to coincide perfectly with Thorough embarrassment from their best hosts starting their own thing. So, anyway, I don't have to tell you guys, you already know, but go go check out Crystal and Sager's new show. It's called Breaking Points. Um, and they'll tell you the stories. I told you guys my story dealing with the hill behind the scenes. They have their own stories, and I'm sure there there's a lot more than just the things that I experienced. And what I experienced was terrible, and I'm sure you've heard me talk about it a thousand times by now, but... Um, I know that they were off, they were put off by like the ad money because they always felt like I'm critiquing X, Y, or Z and the company's taking money from the same people. There would be phone calls. You know, they've told stories of phone calls either from advertisers or politicians who are like, how dare you? You better rein them in. That's the way it works. It's a big club. It's a big club. Crystal and Sager didn't want to be part of that club. Now they're not. And it turns out without them, it's kind of sad and embarrassing, and they are folding faster than a cheap lawn chair. So, <laughs> quickly, quickly, unload it before anybody recognizes what happened with the YouTube channel. Too bad all of the internet already sees it and knows it, but whatever dipshit is, you know, thinking about purchasing a giant media outlet is probably so disconnected from the real world and from the internet that they're like, they don't even know, they won't even realize that they're... Stepping onto the deck of the Titanic. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.